Okay, is this the end for Boris Johnson? Certainly not from his perspective, but it might be out of his hands. After surviving a vote of confidence in his leadership by conservative MPs by a smaller than expected margin, the Conservative Party went on to lose two by-elections by over 15 points on June 23rd. After those defeats, several conservative backbench MPs began publicly discussing changing the party rules to allow for another vote of confidence. Then, on June 30th, Chris Pincher, a government deputy whip, resigned over groping allegations. Questions arose over the weekend on whether the Prime Minister had known about previous allegations made against Mr. Pincher at the time he appointed him a government whip. On Tuesday, July 5th, Number 10 Downing Street admitted that Boris Johnson had been briefed on those previous allegations at the time, but did not recall them at the time he appointed Mr. Pincher a government whip. Later that same day, the Chancellor of the Exchequer and the Health Secretary, two senior government ministers, both resigned, citing concerns over the Prime Minister's integrity and competence. The Prime Minister has reshuffled his cabinet and vowed to continue in office, but will he? History provides two recent examples. Theresa May won a vote of confidence against her leadership in December 2018, but would resign six months later after she failed to get Brexit done. Boris Johnson was seen as the man most interested in her resigning and indeed went on to succeed her. On November 1st, 1990, Jeffrey Howe, the Deputy Prime Minister, publicly resigned, citing concerns over Margaret Thatcher's leadership style and policies. Michael Heseltine, who had been waiting in the wings for four years, launched a challenge against Margaret Thatcher's leadership, and by November 10th, Margaret Thatcher had resigned as Prime Minister. Heseltine, however, did not get the top job. That went to John Major, a cabinet minister who had remained loyal.